Hi, Mrs. Phelps. Now, Ruth, you shouldn't have come. Now, is that any way to talk to a pretty little wife when she comes to say goodbye? Is there someone to give me a kiss? Maybe cry a few tears? Shut your jaw, Scanlon. You didn't really want me to stay away. Wouldn't it have been easier? Tom. It isn't over. You've got to believe that. I try. Haven't got a girl, haven't got a bottle. Well, at least I can get me something to eat. Over here, son. You can wait till lunch. The judge said I was to be hanged, not starved to death. We have a good man fighting on our side now. Best money can buy, huh? It's ham and cheese. I think you'll like it. Thanks. Remember what I told you, hmm? About taking care of yourself? You'll have to stand back now, Mrs. Phelps. When they start shooting, Tom might be hurt. He won't be. But how do you know that? Trust me. I want to. That's why I hired you. But I can't stop myself from thinking that if we go through with this plan of yours, he might be hit by a stray bullet. Uh-huh. Then I remember if we don't try your way, the state of Kansas is gonna hang him. Easy. Easy. <laughs> so she came over about 8.30. <laughs> What if Scanlon doesn't try to escape? In his place, wouldn't you? No, oh, but he's got to be wondering who's helping him and why. He thinks he knows who's helping him. This morning, when he was told what to expect, he said, it's about time. Helping someone who's guilty to escape so you can clear someone who's innocent. It's so impossible. Which is why it's going to work. <laughs> Easy. Mrs. Phelps, don't worry. You do your job. I'll do mine. Clever job of altering. That a brand looked like a skillet full of snakes. Should have seen some of the brands I had to change when I was working in Australia. They were a real challenge, Mud. I like a challenge. And you may have a new one. There's been a prisoner escape in Wichita. Someone we know? Scanlon. Broke clear about ten days ago. Well, it seems I underestimated Mr. Scanlon. Looks like somebody kept your promise for you and helped him. Yes, I wonder who. Ed Wise. Maybe you can ask Scanlon in a few days. 
It's a long way from Wichita to Hangtree. Not for a man who figures to pick up 30,000 when he gets here. Of course, if Scanlon does get through, I'll have to settle my account with him. Meanwhile, Mark, let's hope the law stops in force. Jeb Harlan. I don't care who you are. Do you know what you just done? I had no choice. Do you know who that was? Yep. That was Brad Scanlon. Then why did you mix in? You were going to kill him or capture him. Oh, you bet your sweet boodle I was. That's why I stopped you. You had no right to stop me. I was just doing my job. Oh, you a lawman? Well, of course I am. I'm a Texas Ranger. And if I don't take after that skedaddle, he'll get a lead on me and I'll... Not yet. Now, what do you mean, not yet? I want to tell you something, mister. You are meddling with the law. Oh? I don't see a badge. We don't wear them because we don't need them, that's why. Well, any kind of credentials will do. Oh, I'll give you credentials. I'll give you credentials. I'll tell you that. I'd like to believe you. I don't give two hoops in hell whether you believe me or not. The other man could be the ranger and you could be Scantlin. He's not a ranger. He's Scanlon, a killer. And I'm Reese Bennett, a ranger. How can I be sure, huh? Can't you, can't you tell by just looking at me that I'm a ranger? Sorry. Um, all right. We'll go to Laredo, and I'll prove I'm a ranger. And then, so help me, mister, I'm gonna tear you apart. Fair enough. This sure ain't my day. Ah, congratulations, Reese. Didn't take you long to bring in Scanlon. Well, you see what happened was... Never would have thought he could have done it without it. Me either. I guess maybe it's good for him to get out on his own once in a while. You know, he has got so he depends on us to cover his mistakes for us. I need you too, like I need a case of the collie wobbles. Uh, Chad, you know that fella there doesn't really look much like that, uh, that description we've seen on Scanlon, does he? Joe, you're not suggesting that Reese the Ranger Bennett would, would arrest the wrong man. Well, you two wait a minute. Just one minute. <laughs> not even Reese could do that. Could he? Oh, I don't think so, Joe. No, Captain sent him out for Scanlon, so this man must be Scanlon. <laughs> Maybe he's got on a disguise. Oh, I don't think so, Joe, but if he is, it's fancy. It ain't Scanlon. Now, what happened was that I went and I... I... Yeah? Well, go ahead, Reese. This is your buddy, Joe and Chad. You can tell us anything. Oh, now, what happened, Reese? And we'll help you out of it. Your friend's arrested me and is taking me to your captain. Yeah, but he's, uh, he's supposed to be arresting Scanlon. Yeah, so why is he arresting you? We'll tell that to the captain. That's right. It's just between him, me, and the captain. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Scanlon is a convicted bank robber and killer. You knew that? Mm-hmm. And you knew he escaped from the Kansas authorities? I followed him from Wichita. And knowing all this, 
You deliberately prevented his capture. He sure did, Captain. I ought to lock you up and throw away the key. Aiding and abetting and obstructing justice. I think justice can best be served by keeping Scanlon free at the moment, Captain. Tom Phelps had nothing to do with that bank robbery and murder. A jury decided he did. Jury is 12 men. Men make mistakes. Yourself accepted. It was a case of mistaken identity. The only way to free Phelps is to find a guilty man. Now, Scanlon can lead me to him. Lock Scanlon up and you send Tom Phelps to the gallows. A judge has already done that. Well, the judge was wrong. The judge was wrong. The jury was wrong. But you're right. Look, I am an officer of the law. I'm sworn to enforce it. I respect it and its procedures. I don't respect any hired gun, no matter how fancy his motives are. I don't ask for your respect, Captain. I just say that sometimes the machinery of the law, like any other machinery, jumps a cog. And is it your self-appointed job to correct the law's mistakes? Uh -uh. Only when somebody hires me to do it. Anybody who sets himself above the law is outside it. Reese. Yes, sir, Captain? Pick up Scanlon's trail and bring him back here. Well, uh, what about him, Captain? Forget him. Yes, sir. Now, you're not to leave Laredo until Bennett comes back with Scanlon. If you try, I'll put you in jail. Understood? You're a plain-spoken man, Captain. Hughes. Captain? The man that was in here, follow him. If he tries to leave town, stop him. Yes, sir. Brush him and bed him down. I don't know. He told us he was just playing a little joke on his girlfriend. We didn't mean to get into trouble with the law.
thought you said you were tired. I was, till I saw you, Lila. <laughs> when I got the message to meet you here, I just couldn't believe it. I could hardly believe it myself. You had help getting away? The best. Garrett? Who else? He promised to get me out, didn't he? He's made a lot of promises to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But I had him. Either he got me out or, or I talked. Easier to keep his promise and to, and to hang. Well, I'm here. You're here. What next? I pick up the 30,000 Garrett owes me. And then? We get out of Texas tonight. Tonight? There's a ranger following me. I've got to get into Mexico. From there, maybe we'll head for uh, South America. Look, with all the money we'll have, we can go anywhere we want, when we want. Sure. We can run in high style, hide in the best hotels. You changed your mind about us. If you have, why did you bother to meet me? I still feel the same way about you. It's just that I'm... I'm thinking about the kind of life we're going to have. Once we get out of the country, everything... I don't want to get out of the country. I'd rather go to San Francisco than Mexico. I'd rather live in New York than someplace in South America. My Spanish isn't that good. It, it'd be too risky. I know. I know. You are going to be on the run, Brad. For as long as you are alive. Service? You sure as thunder can. Where are you hiding Brad's camera? Shh, don't you judge me. Where is he? This is not a saloon, sir. Well, now, that's plain to see. Is Brad Scanlon here? He is. Where? In the chamber of repose. Oh, right. Wait, you can't out go of, in there. Out of my way. The widow is with the deceased. Who's with him? The late Mr. Scanlon's widow. What is it, Mr. Jenkins? This gentleman was asking for your husband. Are you a friend of Brad's? Well, uh, not exactly, ma'am. I'm a, I'm a ranger, and I've been following him. Well, you, you can't follow him anymore. My poor Brad. He's, he's finally found peace. That's my. Only comfort. Oh, please, I don't think I blame you, mister. Um, Bennett, ma'am. Reese Bennett. You're only doing your job. Brad made more than his share of mistakes. I, I can't deny that. But de mortuis nil nisi bonum. Don't you agree, Mr. Bennett? Oh, yeah, exactly, ma'am. Exactly. Every time. Every time, ma'am. Uh, I don't want to upset you, Mrs. Scanlon, but do you have any idea how it happened? We were in my room at the hotel, and suddenly I saw someone at the window. I called out a warning to Brad, but it was, it was too late. Uh, and you, you didn't get a good look at the other fellow? It all happened so suddenly, you see. Yeah, sure. And... You don't have any idea who it might have been? Would you like to see him? Well, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I, I sort of would. I can't believe it, I do. I just can't believe it. Neither can I. I'm so alone. 
Mr. Bennett, I, I'm so terribly alone. No. No, Mrs. Scanlon, don't you fret now. Everything's going to be just fine. Don't you worry now. Life is so... so unpredictable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now, come on. Please. Come on now. Forgive me, forgive me. I'm, I'm fine. I'm perfectly all right. At all. <laughs> Who wouldn't have? You almost had me convinced. You should have seen me play Lady Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great idea, Lila. This morning you died. This afternoon you go and collect $30,000. Tomorrow I bury you, and then we really start to live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I may be dead, but I'm starving. Oh, oh, of course you are. I'll have some food sent in right away. <laughs> and a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> but as soon as you are through eating and drinking, then you go after that money. Huh? And don't worry about the ranger, because I'm going to take care of him. another dollar tip. Hmm. Undertaker must be a very generous man. Nope. I've never known him to tip at all before. Ever serve him meals before? This is the first time, but I sure hope it's not the last. Hmm. Must be a big drinker. I guess he kind of does it on the sly. Till tonight, I thought he was a teetotaler. <laughs> I come to pay my respects to the deceased. Well, I'm afraid that's quite impossible. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You can't go in there. Please, you're not allowed to go in there. Please, you mustn't go in there. Well, now. Looks like the deceased got feeling a whole lot better after he had a good meal and a bottle of whiskey. Well, business has been so slow lately. I haven't had a customer in weeks, and they offered to pay me for a full arrangement. First class. So I couldn't see any harm. Ah, helping a killer get away from the law, huh? Killer? Where is he? I don't know, really. I don't. He went out after he... Well, if you're lying to me again, you're going to be needing your own arrangements. First class. <laughs>
Scanlan dead? I told you I'm not sure. I knocked him off his horse. When we went to make sure, the fireworks exploded. Hmm. Could it have been Lila with him? No, it was a man. Someone who could really handle a gun. And he wasn't riding with Scanlan, he was following him. Possibly a lawman. I never did get a good look. If Scanlan is alive, he most certainly will start talking now. Oh, he'll hang a noose around your neck if he can. I don't know why you didn't let him come here. We could have taken care of him for sure. And led that ranger, or whoever is following him, straight to me. No, Mart. We'll just have to hope and trust your aim was accurate. so wrong in the men I put my trust in. Why? I thought you were sweet, kind, and considerate. You lied to me, Mrs. Scanlon. Don't call me that. I am not Mrs. Scanlon. Then you lied to me about that, too. All right. All right. Put me in irons. Lock me up. Torture me. I, am I don't... Go ahead. I don't want to torture you. I don't want to... Lock you up. I just... I just want to know where Scanlon is, that's all. That's all I want to know. I don't know. Well, then, then he forced you to lie for him, and he, and he rode away and left you here. That's what he did. Well, isn't that like all men? They think only of themselves. They never care who they Mrs. are. Mrs. Scanlon. Mrs. Scanlon. I told you what? that's not Mrs. my Scanlon name. Mrs. Scanlon, or whatever your name is. If, if, you're, if you're lying again, if you're lying again about where Scanlon is, I'm telling you, you're going to be in trouble. Bad trouble. I just don't care. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Nothing matters. I wish I'd never seen Scanlon. I wish I'd never seen you. And I wish I'd never been born. Well, now you let me tell you something. You better not leave Hainsbury till I find Scanlon. All right? All right? All right. All right. never seen you before. The only way to have a friend is to be one. Shakespeare? Emerson. Ralph Waldo. I acted in some Shakespeare, but I never did any Emerson. He's a philosopher and poet from my part of the country. Oh. Well, what are you? Oh, a student, among other things. However, at the moment, I'm the bearer of some bad news. Your husband's been killed. Oh, wait a minute. You said no. something you don't understand. You said, Not a I hoax don't. this time. Really? Oh. Well, now, isn't that just Brad's luck? How did it happen? He was ambushed on the trail south of you. And you just happened along? No, I was following Scanlon. How do I know you didn't shoot him? You don't. Why were you following him? He, uh, owed me something. I know the feeling. You thought that when he picked up his share of the money from the holdup, you could collect what he owed you. Hmm? Exactly. Drink? Oh, thanks. What's your name? Harlan, Jab Harlan. Jab? As in hard hitting? <laughs> As in Jabin. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan. Judges, chapter 4. My mother read her Bible. So did mine. You may call me Lila. Thank you. And may I say I admire your poise? Not many women could take the loss of a husband and $30,000 so gracefully. 
It's a strain, believe me. It would have been $30,000, wouldn't it? Well, they took $60,000 from the bank, and there was only Brad and Garrett to share it. And now Garrett has it all, which is just exactly the way he planned it. Garrett doesn't know Scanlon's dead. And the men who shot him didn't get close enough to be sure. So? Well, let's say that Scanlon is still alive. Only the two of us know where he is. The two of us? Well, how cozy. And just where do you come in? Say I'm a doctor who treated Scanlon after the shooting. Garrett is not a man to be easily fooled. Oh, but he's a man with a lot to lose. You'd go to the ranch with me? Mm-hmm. Just how high are your fees, Doctor? Oh, I like round figures. Say, uh, 10,000? 5,000 is just as round. I'm sure we can work out some suitable compensation for my services. When do we go? In the morning. I'll meet you on the trail south at nine. It's such a comfort. To have found a friend in my bereavement. Men can counsel and speak comfort to that grief which they themselves not feel. Emerson. Shakespeare. Till tomorrow. Oh, Jack. Just where is Brad? In a very safe place. That's what you're looking for. Good morning. Get up. I'm glad to hear, Reese. I'll just bet you are. Saves me the trouble of looking for you. Where's Scanlon? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. That's right. If you were to tell me my name was Reese Bennett, I doubt if it was true. Now, where's Scanlon? He isn't going to go away, I'll tell you that. That's for sure. Now, come on, get up. Get up. You know, from the beginning, I've been hoping we could work together. Mm -hmm. Sure, you're ready for us to work together. Now that I got the gun on you, like you had it on me. Now, come on, outside. Outside. All right, come on. In we go. In we go. Come on. In you go. Come on. This is your place. This is your place until I find Scanlon. Now, Reese, wait. Let, let, let's talk this over. Ain't huh? nothing to talk about. Nothing to talk about at all. If you leave me here, you'll never find Scanlon. I'll take that risk. Reese, look, let me out. We go to Colton Spring. What'd you say? Nothing. Nothing. Look, let me out and I'll tell you. Colton Springs. <laughs> so that's where he is, huh? <laughs> Reese, wait. Don't go to Colton Springs. Just try and stop me. Just try and stop me. I'm telling you, you're making a big mistake. Yeah. Well, the biggest mistake I ever made was not locking you up in jail before I left Laredo. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. You ain't fixing on to... Hightailing it out of town like I told you not to, are you? Oh, no. Cause I'd have to put you in jail, too. You mean you already made an arrest this morning? Mm hmm Fella named Jab Holland. At least that's what he says his name was. Who knows? Jab Holland? You know him? No, no, I don't. Well, you just better keep it that way. And you'd better be in that little room of yours when I get back with Scanlon. You know where Brad is? Oh, yeah. Holland don't. Without meaning to.
Good morning. Morning. I couldn't believe it when the ranger said he'd locked you up. He has a touching faith in jails. How could you be so careless? Now you've spoiled everything. What are we going to do? We're going to the Garrett Ranch. You picked the lock. I don't like jails. I don't like prisons or other places of confinement. That's one more thing we have in common. The, uh, the ranger said that you told him where Brad was. I also told him not to believe what I told him. But he's a man who has to find out for himself, huh? Uh -huh. Let's go. Mister! Mister! I've got some news for you. I ain't got no time to waste now, I'll tell you that. But it's about scandals. Oh, Colton Springs, he said. Ain't nothing in Colton Springs except except corn toads and jackrabbits. Please, you must listen to me. I know where Scanlon is. You do? He's in the chamber of repose. Now, do you expect me to swallow that story again? He's in there. See for yourself. I told you this morning, Scanlon isn't going anywhere. Sorry I couldn't wait for you at the jail, but an urgent business appointment takes me to the Garrett Ranch. Cooperatively yours, Jan. I saw a man in a circus once, put his head in the lion's mouth. Lila, you are as lovely as ever. <laughs> Isn't she, Mart? We've missed you. Who's your friend? Uh, this is Dr. Mills, Frank Garrett. A pleasure, Doctor. You look very familiar, Mr. Garrett. Oh, have we met before? You remind me of a friend of mine. Interesting. But you did not come here to talk about your friend. No. About your friend. Brad Scanlon. He wants to see you. Then why didn't he come? Tried to yesterday. Somebody shot him. How seriously, doctor? Critical. He's conscious and talking. Talking a great deal. I see. But only to you and to Lila. So far. He's very anxious to see you, Mr. Garrett. Wants to settle what's between you. And if I do not have the time to go to him. Huh? Talk to the ranger who followed him to Hangtree, I guess. Which would not be to my advantage. If he can't see you before he dies, he means to see you in hell or sooner. So. I'm supposed to take $30,000 for my safe and accompany you and Lila to Scanlon's bedside. Hmm? Otherwise, exposure. That 
is a well-baited trap, Doctor. One that I might have found very difficult to resist. Had I not been forewarned. I'm sorry. Frailty, thy name is woman. Shakespeare. <laughs> friend who's sentenced to hang in your place will be very happy to see you. What's this all about anyway, huh? You were brilliant, Reese. Brilliant. Your timing couldn't have been better. I found Scanlon. I know. Garrett had him killed. If I hadn't had you as a partner, I never could have brought this off. Partners? Now, wait one Nobody minute. Nobody ever guessed we were working together. Working together? Of course. The reward for the return of the holdup money will split right down the middle. We... We get a reward, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and your Captain Parmalee will have to give you credit for what you've done. But the Captain said that we had to go... Captured Garrett, you returned the hold-up money, and you broke up a very successful gang. I did. You bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's right. That's pretty good, huh? It's great. It's great. Take over here, will you? Sure, Jab. All right. Come on, let's go. Come on. You can come out now, Lila. Oh, Jab, I'm so glad you're all right. <gasps> Next time you try to hide, I wouldn't use that perfume. I didn't want to tell Garrett. Honest, I didn't, but, but he threatened me. And I had to pretend to go along with him so that I could get him to trust me so that I could help you. You're marvelous, Lila. We'd make a great team, you and me. Oh, thanks, Lila. I'm human, so I'm tempted, but... Then I remember your full name must be Delilah. And the role of Samson never appealed to me. This time, you saved an innocent man's life, and I'm glad for it. But setting the law aside whenever it suits you is a very dangerous game. I don't deny the danger. In fact, you enjoy it. Well, we each have a job to do. You do it your way, I'll do it mine. There's room for both of us. Goodbye, Mr. Harlan. Captain? You 
sure you ain't gonna change your mind? I don't like cages, Reese. Cages? For me, a regular job's a cage, settling in one place. I'll stay free for a while. Well, sounds like an iffy kind of life to me. Yeah, but I like the unpredictable. And there'll always be someone somewhere who needs a quick gun <laughs> with guaranteed results. <laughs> well, if you ever do get tired of drifting and you feel like cooperating again, I'll remember Laredo. And believe me, Reese, I'll always be grateful to you for all you taught me. Oh, forget it. It was nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Of course, you realize who you're talking to. Of course. And that's why I'm taking this opportunity to inform you that this town has been cheated by touring actors for the last time. But you're not going to arrest me, are you? Unless you can pay up. Are you questioning the credit of famous players international, sir? No, nope, just yours. But you're not going to hold me responsible just because our managers absconded, are you? We sure are. Somebody got to pay up right now, or somebody got to go to the pokey. But couldn't you wait until after tonight's performance? Tonight's performance. <laughs> ha! And just who is left to perform? Your entire company has vanished. But that's the whole point. There will be a performance tonight. You see, what we had in mind... Ah, Dudley Lester. My old friend. How are you these days? Well, if it isn't Rich Rancher Rogers. Fun. How is the wealthiest man in West Texas? Oh, fine, my boy. Just fine. My, my word, you do look trouble. I am. This fella here refuses to extend my credit anymore. And this chappy wants to put me in jail. This is outrageous. Gentlemen, you may trust this sterling character implicitly. And any such credit as he may wish to request, I will underwrite with my entire fortune. <laughs> I saw the show. Oh, really? Did you like it? Pardon me, ma'am. All right, boys, let's take a little Shall walk. Do not manhandle me. I shall speak to my lawyer. Walk. Do not be done. Do not be done. You're not me. Will you let me worry about it? Will you let me worry about it? Will you let me worry about Hold on there a second, big horse. Sheriff, uh, you arresting these two men? That's right. Oh, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Uh, why not? Yeah, why not? We're Texas Rangers, Sheriff. And if I'm not mistaken, this man's name is Newton Weeks. Yeah, that's who he is, all right. I thought so. I've been trailing him for three hard, long weeks. Weeks? Oh, we have a priority arrest on this man, Sheriff. We have? For him? Yes, Joe. <clears throat> now, who's this, uh... Who's this other fellow? Sebastian Hargreaves, the third. He's Dudley Lester, the first. Uh-huh. I've got a priority arrest for him, too. What have I done? Yeah, what's the charges, Ranger? Framus. Framus? Fram? Framus. He's right. I admit it. I Framist in Fort Worth. I didn't. You most certainly did, and I was with you. Newton, these are Texas Rangers. That's right. And a state offense takes priority over a local one. Right, Sheriff? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, Framus? Framus. Right, Joe? Uh, you're telling it, Chad. That's right, Joe. These actors are signing shits all over town. What about that? Well, uh, that's a local problem, mister, and us Texas Rangers don't ever involve ourselves in local problems. You'd let the sheriff have us. A few bad debts is one thing, but the Texas Rangers... It's no good, Dudley. The game is up. I knew the Rangers would get us eventually. I still don't remember Framusing. All right, now, you two, you're coming with us. Uh, you have any other belongings? Yeah, they got a rented horse and wagon outside packed, ready to go. I caught him trying to skip out of town. Good job, Sheriff. Good job. I have to make a full report on this to the state capitol, and it wouldn't surprise me a bit if you didn't receive a special commendation for arresting these two desperados. Desperados? Yes, Joe, desperados. All right, now, come on, you two. Let's go, and no funny business. Cover them, Joe. <laughs> 
Thanks again, Sheriff. Good job. Chad, you're a lifesaver. You're oh, really just a... returning an old favor, part. <laughs> Joe, I want you to meet an old friend of mine, Newton Weeks from down New Orleans way. He's an actor. Uh, well, I figured he uh, he had to be kidding. <laughs> Joe. Dudley Lester, my partner. How do you do? Mr. Hey. Lester? Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Nice to see you. Tell me, Newt, uh, that old tin badge arresting you two fellas, uh, nothing serious, I hope. Oh, no. Just a monetary misunderstanding. Uh-huh. Old show business story, really. Our uh, ex-manager ran off with all the box office receipts. Oh. Took every penny. Including our wages. Yes, so naturally, we had to uh, sign a few tabs around town, oh, hotel naturally. bills, naturally. you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Guess you've been in that sort of situation yourself. Yes, we've been there before, haven't we, Joe? Huh? Uh, there most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, Newton, we Chad Cooper. Down. New Orleans, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I take it we're not actually under arrest, then? Uh, no, not actually. You ignoramus, we're rescued! Oh, how jolly. Real jolly. So what are you doing in town, Chad? Well, my partner Joe and I are chasing an outlaw called the Pecos Kid. Pecos Kid? What's he look like? Maybe we've seen him. Uh, that's the problem. Uh, nobody knows uh, what he looks like. Yeah, that's right. Well, anyway, first things first, we'd better get you and your friend out of town. You hold on here, and uh, we will get our horses and meet you back here. Okay. I'll teach you two to Framus in the state of Texas. <laughs> uh, tell me, what exactly is Framus? <laughs> well, there's more than one kind. Right, Chad. Right, Joe. <laughs> ah, we'll be leaving you about here. We can't thank you enough. If we can ever reciprocate in kind. Oh, that's our pleasure, boys. Uh, oh, just one thing. If I were you, I wouldn't show my face around here for a while. Nor any other portion of our anatomy, either. Good thinking. We'll take your advice, Chad. Well, take it easy and lots of luck to you. With that horse, I'm afraid you're gonna need it. Thanks again. And you will be careful with that Picos person, won't you? Yeah, we can find him. Nice fellows. Princes among men. Newton. Yes, Dudley. Mind if I ask you a question? Not at all. Where are we going? Home, of course. We'll never get there. We've got no money. We're not in jail. We've got no jobs. We have our wardrobe trunk. We're going to get awfully hungry. We have our health. We're in terrible trouble, aren't we? You're not going to cry, are you? Right out here, in front of everybody. In front of whom? Me. Me. Oh, Dudley. <laughs> In these hard times, you've got to put up with anything. In these hard times, you must have picked or choose. The famous players company has left us up the creek, you see. What wouldn't we give for a cup of tea in these hard times? Things are bad, awful bad. In fact, they've never been worse before. But every single chappy can make a girlie happy. Food is dear, rent is dear, but love is cheap for the time of year. So grab the nearest miss and whisper while you kiss. In these hard times, you've got to put up with anything. In these hard times, you mustn't pick or choose. The famous players' company has left us up the creek, you see. What wouldn't we get for a cup of tea in these hard times? What wouldn't we get for a cup of tea in these hard times? Lubbock, a hundred miles. Wanna try for it? Shh! He'll faint. Why don't we try for Whiskey Flat? It's the nearest. Maybe we can pick up some eating money. Good idea. I'm starving. Let's go. Ah. Uh, strategy. I'll go in first. Leave me out here alone, whatever for? Because there are two of us. You and me, right? Right. And if they're going to be looking, they'll be looking for the two of us. You and me. Right again. But why will they be looking for us? Because we're touring actors who've recently run afoul of the local constable. Oh, you mean the sheriff. Right again, Dudley, you're improving. You really are, you know. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll go in alone, I'll case the town, I'll find out what's happening. 
Now, if the coast is clear, I'll post some handbills, hire a hall, we'll see what happens. Wonderful. But you're still leaving me out here alone, and, and, and it's Indian country. Oh, don't be silly. I'll wager there isn't an Indian within 500 miles of here. Maybe they won't see us. How? How what? Just how? Who are you? Me? Oh, I'm, I'm, um... I'm a marshal. I'm the marshal of Gunslick Gulch. He's a great friend of the Indians. And, and a mighty warrior. Him no marshal. Him actor. Him on stage three forks. Oh, really? Did you see the show? We see show. And what did you think of it? Huh? Savages. Prices. Two bits a shot. Second shot's on the house. Second one's free, eh? Right, well, in that case, I'll have another. Heard it before. Mm. Cheers. Been agents this morning. Hold it! You're dealing from the bottom of the deck. Nobody calls me a crook and lives. You thieving pack rat! You lion coyote! What'd you call me? A lion coyote? But he, he didn't mean it, did you? Now then, nice cowboy. Hey, easy. What? Hmm? Somebody stop them! If that bullet goes through him, it'll hit me! They're gonna kill each other! <laughs> I don't believe it. I, I could have sworn them. Ain't nobody shot nobody in this town in three months. In fact, nobody's even fired a gun. Municipal safety campaign? <laughs> Town's full of fighting men, willing to die with their boots on. But even a fighting man wants a decent burial. They have a preacher say a few kind words over it. You mean they haven't got a preacher? Nope. Gave up. Left town three months ago. Maybe it's a good thing. Think of all the lives he's saved by not being here. Yeah, maybe. But it made it kind of tough on the peaceful folks. They really could use a preacher, eh? Ain't had no weddings, no funerals, no christings, no sermons. No preacher to deliver a sermon? Nope. No one to take up the church collection? Uh-uh. Golly, that's an outrage. I don't want to be a 
preacher. Can I play a marshal? Whiskey Flat does not need a marshal, but it does need a preacher. But preachers go on and on. Could I play a marshal? Marshals, all they have to say is, howdy, ma'am, and, and, and fool around with their guns and things. Dudley, I really think you should play this part. Why? Because if you don't, we're going to starve to death. Look, it's terribly simple. All you've got to do is deliver a sermon, then I'll take up the collection. Can't perform without a stage. The whole Wild West is your stage. When you walk into the town of Whiskey Flat, the Reverend Dudley Lester, you'll be walking onto a real stage real with real people, real people, real scenery, real. real food, real food, real food. No one could do it like you, Dudley. Do you really think so? I can see it now. Dudley Lester, the actor who won the West, the man who brought Macbeth to the Mohawks. Dudley Lester, starring in Preacher Jones Goes West. Your costume, Preacher Jones. Your audience awaits you in Whiskey Flat. I shall bring gladness to their hearts. And sadness to their pocketbooks. It's a preacher. You're right, it is a preacher. I'm mighty glad to see you, preacher. Mighty young-looking preacher. Welcome to Whiskey Flat, Parson. My name is Bellflower Fern. It's very nice of you to make us feel at home. Oh, well, we haven't had a preacher here for three months. Well, you've got one now. Friends, this is Reverend Jones. And, madam, if you think he looks young, he thinks old. <laughs> and this, brethren and sistren, is one of my converts. Yes, when I found this poor, unfortunate soul, he was nothing but a bum. A poor, penniless, drunken, no-good, rotten bum. Yes, it took a lot of time, but I finally showed him the error of his ways. Hallelujah! We must all try to remember that in every man there is some good, even in this bum. Ex-bum. Well, Preacher Jones, we sure would appreciate it if you'd stay around here in Whiskey Flat for a while. We need you bad. Why, well, we haven't had a church service in three months of Sundays, nor a wedding. Well, my friend and I were headed east, but uh, we always try to help others, don't we, Newton? And in doing so, we also help ourselves. The room the last preacher had is still vacant at my house. Oh, madam, I don't think the preacher and I could possibly afford... Oh, land of Goshen, I'm not asking you to pay. You don't? God bless you, my child. Everybody in town will be glad to chip in just to have a preacher here. We'll pay your expenses. Well, that's very generous of you all. Uh, as I said before, uh, we were headed back east. We're very badly needed back there in the east, aren't we, Newton? But uh, as you good people obviously need preaching to so badly, I'm sure something could be arranged. Uh, what do you think, old boy? I'm sure we could manage to stay for at least one collection as sermon. <laughs> sermon. Well, I know it's just going to be wonderful having you here in town, Preacher Jones. <laughs> and you too, Brother Bum. Yes. Good afternoon, Preacher Jones. Remember me? My name is Bellflower Fern. I certainly do, Miss Bellflower. May I say, you're looking very pretty today. Oh, thank you. I guess I look pretty because I'm so happy. You see, now that you're here, I can get married. Isn't that nice? Married. Married? Yes, yeah, so I thought I'd better come by and tell you the good news. Yes, of course. Who's the lucky man? My childhood sweetheart. He's been away for years making a name for himself, but now he's come back and he's asked me to be his wife. Romance. Young love. How delightful. I really must marry you one of these days. Oh, thank you, preacher. Um, have you seen Mr. Weeks? Oh, yes. I'm afraid he went into that awful place. The Silver Dollar Saloon. Ah, the saloon, yes, of course. The dear boy is no doubt arranging a revival meeting among the sinners. Well, thank you, my dear. It's lovely seeing you again, but I really must be off now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I 
I've been looking all over the place for you. Oh, well, I've just decided to backslide a little bit, you know. Don't look now, I think people are looking. Are you a preacher? I'll have a... Yes, I'm a preacher. <laughs> That's right, folks. <laughs> This gentleman here is Preacher Joe. Yahoo! We finally got a preacher. Spoken word. Ben, just a friendly discussion, Ben. I heard there was a preacher around here. No, sir, not here. Father Wilson's a preacher. Who, me? Him? Well, that's all right, boys. I like preachers. Now tell me, mister, you a good preacher? Good? Why, he gives the most fantastic performance. I try to be a good man, show the way. Bring a little light. Good. Come here. I'm Ben Conrad. That mean anything to you? Pleased to meet you, Brother Conrad. Mr. Conrad's the biggest celebrity around here. Went on the world and made himself a great reputation. The greatest gunfighter around here. Oh, really? Nothing I like better than gunfighters. Well, then we're just going to get along fine. A preacher, I know you wouldn't accept one, but I'd like to buy your friend here a drink. Oh, no, 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 I'm not a great one for... You know, I knew a fellow once who wouldn't drink with me when I invited him. He rode a thousand miles trying to get away from me, but I followed him. Poor fellow. Double, please. You know what I always say? A shot in the hand is worth two in the head. <laughs> That's what I always say. All right, come on, fellas, let's sit down, huh? Pull up a chair, then. Now, how long are you going to be here, preacher? Well, I'll be preaching the sermon on Sunday, and then... Sunday? Well, now, that's fine. We can have the wedding on Saturday. Wedding? Yeah, me and Bellflower Fern is getting hitched. The prettiest little gal in town. Oh, yes, yes, she certainly is. The only thing is... Wedding? But, but I don't see how I can. I mean, a wedding is so permanent. Was something wrong about me getting married? No, 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 no. I think every man should be married. No, it's just that, you see, I'm a little bit rusty when it comes to weddings. Yeah, well, then you got till Saturday to get unrusty, preacher. I want to get married, and when I don't get what I want, I get very unhappy. You understand that? And when I get unhappy, people die. <laughs> it's no use, Newton. I can't go through with it. But you've got to. Ben will kill you if you don't perform the wedding ceremony. And he'll kill me when he finds out I'm not a real preacher. <laughs> there you are. You see, you can't lose. Where are you going? I want to get dressed. <laughs> oh! I'm going to get out of here. We can't. We've got to wait till Sunday for the collection. Oh, forget it. Well, then we won't have any money. Oh, I'm just going home. Look, do you remember the story about Ben? And the man who wouldn't have a drink with him? Do you remember how he ran away and Ben followed? Do you remember what happened? Dearly beloved brethren, we are gathered here today. Joe! Oh, look who's here. <laughs> what are you Hello. doing here in Whiskey Flat? Hey, hey, you got your color on, oh, have I? Oh, yes. Are we glad to see you? Are we in trouble? You ain't alone, Bart. Well, we thought perhaps you could help us. Why, we haven't even been able to help ourselves so far, but we can discuss it over a drink. Come on. Ah, uh, he can't. He can't? Why, too young? 
Scholars on backwards. Oh. You're not telling me he's a preacher. <laughs> I am indeed. Well, well, that's just part of our sad story. You see, we met this chap called Ben Conrad, and uh, and uh, that's not all. And uh, Because we also met a lady called Miss Bellflower, and the trouble is they want to get married, and... Hey! Drink your milk, preacher Jones. There's no need to rub it in. So you're a genuine, honest-to-goodness, registered preacher, huh? That's just the trouble. I'm not. And if he performs the wedding on Saturday, well, then... Poor Bellflower. Such a nice girl. Pretty, too. In fact, if I weren't a preacher... Dudley! Well, why don't you boys just sit? Just don't go through with it. Ben Conrad will kill us. He's a gunman. Ben Conrad. That ring a bell with you, Joe? Never heard of him. Me neither. There he is. That's Conrad. That's him. Ooh, he a look, Jim. Yeah, he does have a look. Good morning, preacher. You're at it kind of early, ain't you? Good morning, Brother Conrad. Mr. C Cooper. Cooper? Mr. Riley. Howdy. Conrad. You friends of the preacher? Well, you might say that. We're a couple of traveling divinity students. With uh, guns, huh? Uh, we have a very unruly flock, sir. And that's a pure gospel. You all set for the wedding, preacher? Oh, yes. I can hardly wait. That's good. I want this hitching to come off without a hitch. Now that's funny. Are you fellas going to be around for my wedding Saturday morning? I'm afraid not. No, we have a little preaching of our own to do. That's too bad. And you just be sure that everything works out all right, preacher. You know what happens when I get unhappy. Uh, no. What? Now that's funny. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. He has got to look good. Yeah. yeah. You see, if I marry them, Bellflower will go away on a honeymoon thinking she's legally married. And if he doesn't, he'll kill us. Seems our boys do have a bit of a problem, Joe. You reckon there's any way we can help them out? Well, maybe they're worrying themselves about nothing. Uh, Mr. Conrad here looks like a real friendly fella. For a killer. That's exactly what I mean. He's a... Speaking of killers, Joe, uh, do you recollect old three-fingered Jake? <sighs> oh, now, there was the same kind of killer, same kind of situation. Same kind of ending. What happened? Oh, I don't... I don't think you'd even want to hear about it. It might make you... Sick. <sighs> Chad, we've got to help these boys. Well, Joe, that's just what we're gonna do, too. You're gonna shoot him. Well, now, a ranger can't shoot down a man in cold blood. He hadn't done nothing. Well, not yet, he had. You're not gonna tell him? that I'm not a real preacher. Oh, no. You're gonna tell him. And then if everything works out like it should, well, we'll get to him before he gets to you. It's an old trick, and it almost always works. <laughs> yeah. That's wonderful, really wonderful. So you just don't have to worry about your old Joe. Well, that looks like Jake McBride. That is Jake McBride. The last time I seen him, he was uh, traveling with a Pecos kid. And if he's around here, so is the Pecos kid. Now, where do you figure he might be headed? We better find out. Hey, hey, Chad, Joe, what about? Well, why don't you two fellas put your head together and try to come up with something else? And don't get him mad. At least till we get back. It's nice to have friends when you're far away from home. Now, don't you forget Saturday morning, preacher. I'm gonna be flat unhappy if this ain't the best wedding this town has ever seen. And you know what happens when I get unhappy. Now, that's not funny.
There's Jake, Mitch Hardesty, some of the other boys. It looks like they're set for a wait. Yeah, I reckon. He suppose it's for the Pecos kid? I reckon. Well, they can wait. We can wait. Yeah, I reckon. Miss Bellflower, you really do look wonderful today. Oh, thank you. Ben is really getting a wonderful prize. I, I, you haven't changed your mind by any chance, have you? Oh, Mr. Weeks, you're such a tease. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I'm done. Ben Conrad is the answer to any girl's dream. He's so manly and so commanding. And... He's commanding, all right. <laughs> oh, but Ben, uh, Ben, honey, turn around. Uh, must have seen me before the wedding, honey. It's bad luck. <laughs> Is everything all set? I'm afraid so. I mean, uh, yes. You got the ring? Uh, the ring? The ring. Uh, uh, do you want it now? No, stupid. You give it to me when the preacher asked for it. Ain't you ever stood up before? Oh, yes. It's just this time I feel a little dizzy. <laughs> Where is the preacher? In the chapel. Doing what? Praying. What for? A miracle, I think. Get him. Yes, sir. What are you doing there? Would you believe I lost a collar button? Mm -mm. Out. Come on. Newton, I just can't marry them. It wouldn't be fair to Bellflower. If you don't marry them, Ben is going to be very unhappy. Unhappy no. twice. Huh? Bang, bang. One for you, one for me. Wait. I've got it. I know how we can stop the ceremony. How? We'll set fire to the church. That's the most horrible idea I've ever heard of. We can't set fire to the church. Why not? We need it for the Sunday collections. Preacher, you gonna marry me or not? I thought you were planning to marry Miss Bellflower. That's not funny. We'll, 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 we'll be right with you, sir. All right, we'll make it snappy. I'm in a hurry. That's one of his happier moods. Newton, that man will kill me when he finds out I'm not a preacher. Dudley, if you're not a preacher, what are you? Well, I'm petrified. How about that? Oh, Poppycock, you're a great actor playing the part of a preacher. You, Dudley Lester, must believe the part. Now, say to yourself, I am a preacher. I am a... It's no use. Let me hear you say it. I am a preacher. I can't. Drink this. All right. Good. Now, let me hear you say it. I am a preacher. I'm a shop. Lobcorn! Perfect. I'm Bishop Lobcorn! This rock's about as hard as your saddle. I reckon. Maybe the kid ain't coming, Drew. You think they know where he is? Well, I think we might ask them. They'll have to just hesitate a little about telling us. Well, then we'll be firm, Joe. Gentle. But firm. Yeah. Let's go. I'm getting tired of waiting. Waiting's over, boys. Yeah, it looks like we killed them all. Oh, no, Joe. I just winged old Jake here. Howdy, oh. Jake! Don't be so cheerful. You busted my shoulder. I uh, could have been aiming for your head. Hey, where's Pecos kid? Well, looks like we're going to have to heat up the fire, Joe. Jake looks a mite chilly. Howdy, Jake. What are you going to do, torture me? 
And I wouldn't do anything like that, Jake. We're friends. I'm just gonna dig that ah. bullet out of this shoulder. And then I'm gonna cauterize the wound, that's all. All right, all right. We're supposed to meet the kid on the Furnace Wells Road this morning. He'll be on the stage. Well, where is he now, Jake? Whiskey Flat. Whiskey Flat? What name's he going under, Jake? His real name, Ben Conrad. Dud Newt. Yeah, and if Conrad finds out about Dudley, he's gonna be real unhappy. And that ain't gonna be funny. Let's go, let's go. Dearly beloved, friends and neighbours, I'm afraid we'll have to cancel the ceremony. What do you mean? I've lost my book. Oh, that's it, folks. <laughs> Wedding's off, but don't miss the big sermon on Sunday. And... Now, wait a minute. You're a preacher, ain't you? You must have done this lots of times before. Don't you know the words by heart by now? Well, I'm rather slow at learning, you see. Uh, besides, I'd like to be accurate. Yeah, well, you just say them words good enough so that me and Bellflower is married. Do you understand? Well, you shouldn't ad-lib a wedding ceremony, you know. I mean, I always say, if a thing's worth doing, then it's Shut worth... Shut up. All right, now you get started, preacher. Dearly beloved, friends and neighbors, we are gathered here today to join in holy wedlock the party of the first part, Bellflower Fern, with the party of the second part, Ben Conrad. That's more like it. Do you, Ben, promise to honor, cherish, and take real good care of this woman? I do. And do you, Bellflower, promise to honor, cherish, and avoid this man? What? No, I mean obey this man. I do. Uh, are there any objections to this marriage? Any at all? Hurry, 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 folks. Come on, roll up. Get your objections in before it's too late. Come on now, sir. Now, sir, you, sir. You look objectionable. Do you object? <laughs> you know. You know. No objections. I step down. Cowards. Oh, well, as there are obviously no objections, we're obviously forced to continue. May we have the ring? The ring? The ring. The ring. Oh, the ring. Oh, uh, didn't I give it to you? I'll give it to you if you don't give it to me. Oh, here it is. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Now, try there. Go. Oh, I thought... Over there. No, looks as if it's lost. That's it. No ring. Ceremony's off. Can't have a wedding without a ring. That's it, folks. <laughs> Been one of those days, isn't it, really? All right, if ever I could file out by the north door, then I think... Hold we'll... it. We'll just use your ring. This ring? Mm -hmm. This ring? No, no, no. no, no. It's, 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 it's stuck. 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 Stuck for years. Right. The ring. Now, what's next? Repeat after me. I, Ben. I, Ben. Being of sound mind and judgment. Being of sound mind and judgment. Ain't that for a will? I told you I need the book. Wait a minute. Just stay where you are and finish the ceremony. By whatever authority I happen to have at the moment, I hereby pronounce you man and wife. Yeah, looks like I owe you and the preacher a little something. Well, just pass what you think the little woman is worth to you. There's five dollars. Worth more than that as a foot warmer. <laughs> you trying to be funny? Oh, just just a little joke. <laughs> Very little. Mm -hmm. Well, 
That's all, folks. Time that me and Bellflower come on right along here, Bellflower. Time we was leaving on our honeymoon. But you can't. Why not? Not, uh, not without giving us a chance to toast your happiness. Why yes. toast the bride and groom? Yes. Uh, to the bride and groom. Well, so long, folks, and thanks a lot. I've got a toast. Good boy. Uh, may the groom's business continue to prosper. The best I could manage. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, before you go... Uh, no more toasts. We're heading for El Paso. No more toasts? Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have perhaps forgotten the most important toast of all. Are we so callous and unpatriotic to forget our beloved president? Rutherford B. Hayes. To the president. And I propose another toast <laughs> to the vice president. To William A. Wheeler. Who's that? The vice president. Well, uh, and, uh, dear friends, dear friends, shall we have a moment of silence in honor of those who died in the Mexican War? Let us bow our heads. Mexican War was over 30 years ago. Some of us forget so soon. Come on, Belfar, we're getting out of here. Impossible, it wouldn't be decent to leave without serenading the bride. Waiting, oh, you know I'm waiting. I miss you, honey, you know I do. Lonely, just for you only. You can't see it. You know no one else but you. It's like a chorus. Hey, my buddy! enough serenade. I like your music, but Bellflower and me is leaving on our honeymoon right now. That does it. They're on their way to El Paso. We still have 12 hours left. How'd you work that out? I loaned Ben a horse and wagon. With that horse, we could beat him on foot. So we'll take the stagecoach and we'll be there before him. And then what? We, 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 we keep keeping them apart. Newton, it's hopeless. We'll be keeping them apart for the rest of our lives. You worded that perfectly. The rest of our lives. Come on. Where they? There they are. Goodbye, Preacher Jones and Brother Bob. Come on, we got to catch them. With this horse? The wind behind us is faster than walking. Come on, boy. <laughs> you can do it. Come on. Come on, then, boy. Come on, lightning. Lightning. Come on, then. You did it. We're moving. <laughs> oh, it's no use, Newton. Let's forget it. Well, tell that to Ben Conrad. He never forgets. Oh, you're right. But how are we going to ever catch up with them? Well, maybe the stagecoach will break down. I mean, maybe someone will hold it up. Quick, get to the wardrobe trunk. That's it. What for? Well, from now on, you're no longer a preacher. You're a highway robber. And so am I. All right, let's see how it looks. Pull your mask up. Wonderful, Dudley. Simply wonderful. What good will it do, holding them up? But it's going to stop them from going on their honeymoon, isn't it? We'll kidnap Bell Bellflower and then we'll tell her the truth. With these prop guns? What about them? Ben's got real ones. We'll get the drop on him. Look, you've got to remember you're playing the part of the fastest gun in the West. That's it. Oh, it's hopeless, Newton. Why, the way this nag is traveling? Well, the way this nag is galloping along, you'd think that instead of heading for El Paso, we were going to New York. He obviously doesn't like New York. Why would anyone want to go back to Three Forks? New York! New York! That's it! Hmm? That's the answer. What is it? Say New York and she stops dead. She does want to go home. But if you say three, four... <laughs> <laughs> hey, there it is! Pass!
Whatever it is you're supposed to watch at a time like this. I think you're just awful for holding us up. We're on our honeymoon. You just think you are. Ah, uh, you folks just uh, uh, step down off the coach there. And... Now be careful, please. These guns cost money. All right, you two, take off those masks. Come on, we're incognito. I said take them off. It's Preacher Jones and Brother Bum. Yeah, there sure is something funny about this. Doesn't seem very funny to me. I told you two not to make me unhappy. Now I am unhappy. You know what I'm going to do. Oh, Mr. Conrad, please. Preacher, you must know a couple of prayers. Mr. Conrad, Well, please. you better start praying now. Ben, don't. We won't cause you any trouble. Yep, I'm going to guarantee if that. If you let us go, we'll go right back to three forks. Uh -huh. so maybe... New York! Please. New York! Unconscious? That'll teach him to fool around with us. You brutes, you did this to him. Did you do this to him? Well, it was an accident. You've hurt him. Maybe you've killed him. I wouldn't be worrying too much about him, ma'am. Uh, that's the Pecos kid. Pecos kid? Pecos kid. Oh, that's impossible. He's Ben Conrad, my husband. Well, he may be Ben Conrad, ma'am, but he's also the Pecos kid. Wanted for 14 murders, 23 robberies. Why? He's one of the worst outlaws in the whole state of Texas. I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, that's terrible. I, I just married him. No, I kind of doubt that, ma'am. That's right, ma'am. You're not really married. In fact, Preacher Jones isn't really a preacher. He's an actor. An actor? Had you convinced, didn't I? Y you mean I'm not married to him? He he's not my husband? No, ma'am. He's just another killer heading for a rope. Give me a hand, will you, Joe? Yeah. Oh, 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 how can I ever thank you? Oh. Oh, if it hadn't been for you, I, I might have been married to that horrible outlaw. Well, Miss Bellflower, now that I'm no longer your preacher, perhaps you and I could get to know one another a little better. Not now, stupid. She's just lost her husband. Yes. Besides, I could never think of you as anything but my preacher. You see, Dudley, what a sublime actor you really are. And now, Miss Bellflower, since I am definitely not a preacher, might I call upon you this evening? No. Uh, I'm busy morning this evening. Oh. Makes perfect sense to me. Well, I've got some good news for you. There's a thousand dollar reward out for the capture of the Pecos kid. And from the looks of things, it's all yours. How is a thousand dollars? In money. Well, I reckon. Do you suppose we could have it now? Uh, you suppose you could wait till you get back to town? I suppose so. Perhaps I was a little bit hasty wanting to go home after all. Dudley. Yes, Newton? After we've collected this award, you know we must do it, don't you? Don't tell me you want to go back to Three Forks. Dudley! 